This video is about retinal tear and detachment. Retinal detachment is a big deal because of the risk it carries for vision loss. It is not common, but it is not rare. To get you oriented, the cornea is the clear window that lets light into the eye. The cornea and lens together focus light onto the retina, which acts like film in a camera. The process leading to a retinal detachment begins with a retinal tear, which is followed by a small detachment that progressively increases in size. As the retina detaches from the wall of the eye, it loses function and you lose part of your vision. What causes all of this? Usually changes in the vitreous that happen with time, or age. In another set of videos we cover the vitreous in detail. Here we will do a brief review. The vitreous is the jelly that fills the hollow space in the center of the eye. It is about 98% water, with structure given by a matrix of collagen fibers. In youth, the vitreous is quite uniform, but over time, things change. Two key changes happen. One, pockets of liquid form in the body of the vitreous, the dark patches at the arrows, and two, the vitreous progressively separates from its attachments to the back part of the retina. Keep that sequence in mind because we are going to return to that in a minute. In addition to age, there are several risk factors for developing a retinal tear. Among them are previous cataract surgery, trauma, significant nearsightedness, and a few other less common problems. Also, there are different kinds of detachments, including traction and exudative, but we are only going to cover the ones caused by retinal tear. A tear is most often caused by vitreous pulling on a part of the retina where it is strongly attached. Here is how that works. Back in the vitreous, here after separation from its attachment to the back of the retina. That is important because it leaves the mass of the vitreous tethered only to the retina in the front of the eye. What do you think happens when the eye moves? As the eyeball rotates, the vitreous wants to remain stationary. So every time you move your eye, the vitreous is pulling on the retina at the orange arrow. Most of the time, the vitreous eventually pulls free from the retina with no problem except a new floater. But sometimes it is attached strongly enough so that when it pulls, it creates a retinal tear. This diagram is intended to show a more 3D view of the tear. In this closer view, you can see it is a small, elevated flap in the shape of a horseshoe. A key point here is the flap is elevated because the vitreous is pulling on it. How important is that? Here is a retinal tear where a piece of retina is pulled completely free. Without vitreous traction, this is unlikely to form into a retinal detachment. A tear is a hole that allows the liquid part of the vitreous to get underneath the retina, and so the retina starts to detach from the wall of the eye. Technically, the amount of fluid going through the hole has to exceed the ability of the underlying pigment cells to pump it out. In my 3D view, this is meant to show the tear and a shallow elevation of the retina. As more fluid gets beneath the retina, the size of the detachment progressively increases. Here, the 3D view shows a larger detachment. It will continue to increase in size until the entire retina is detached, unless someone steps in to repair it. Here is how we would draw a diagram of that detachment, the center of the diagram being the center of vision. Once the retina is detached, then that part of your vision goes missing, like in this illustration. Since the image is reversed inside the eye, in this case, we are showing the right eye missing the left half of vision, indicating the retinal detachment is on the right side of the eye. This is a good time to pause and talk about what you might notice if these things were happening in your eye. Vitreous pulling on the retina often causes the retinal cells to fire, creating what you see as light flashes, usually with eye movement. When a retinal tear occurs, it often releases pigment or blood into the vitreous that you see a sudden appearance of new floaters. If a detachment occurs, then that part of your vision goes missing. 
Should you experience any of these symptoms, you want to contact your ophthalmologist promptly. The sooner you get to it, the easier it is to repair. Now, how do we fix these things? This poses a range of problems, each treated in a different way, depending on the size of the detachment and the location of the tears. And retinal surgeons typically have their own favorite methods. We are going to cover the general concepts. Starting with the simplest case, a tear is relatively easy to treat. We are going to treat this tear with a laser, which is a concentrated beam of light, usually delivered through the same microscope we use to examine the eye. Here is our first pulse of laser energy hitting the retina. The light energy creates a burn, which creates a scar, effectively making a spot weld. We want to use enough laser spots to keep the retina welded to the wall of the eye and so keep a detachment from forming. This means completely surrounding the tear. I have shown one row, but usually it is two or three rows of laser spots. Welding can also be done with a freezing probe or cryo treatment. In this case, the freezing probe is applied to the outside of the eye. It forms an expanding ice ball that encompasses the tear. The welding effect is the same as with the laser, but it is a little tougher on the eye. As we move from retinal tear to detachment, things become more complicated. There are three standard ways of repairing a retinal detachment depending on its size and location. Scleral buckle, pneumatic or gas bubble, and vitrectomy. Each of these techniques aims to get the retina back in position against the eye wall and weld it so it will stay put. With a detachment there are two principal issues that have to be dealt with. One is the fluid that has accumulated under the retina, which is separating the photoreceptors from the pigment cells underneath, and two is the pulling of the vitreous on the retinal tear. Usually the traction has to be relieved or the repair will not be successful. The first surgery that could successfully repair a retinal detachment was scleral buckling. For a long time this was the standard surgery. The operation addresses our structural concerns in three steps. Step one is to get rid of the subretinal fluid. Approaching from the outside of the eye it involves making an incision through the wall of the eye to reach the subretinal space, allowing the fluid to drain. The pointy item is meant to be a scalpel. With the fluid drained you are now back at square one, so to speak, with a retinal tear and vitreous traction. Either laser spots or cryo can be used to create the welds, but you still have the vitreous traction. In this technique, that is dealt with by putting a band or buckle around the equator of the eye, typically made of silicon. By tightening the band like a belt, it will indent the wall of the eye and relieve the vitreous traction. Success rate is over 80 percent, but it is complicated to perform and has its particular set of complications. A more recent development is pneumatic repair. If the detachment is not too large and is located in about the upper half of the eye, it may be fixable by the simple method of injecting a gas bubble and applying laser or cryo. Here a needle is passed into the eye, then a small bubble of gas is injected, which will temporarily close the break, allowing the pigment cells to pump out the subretinal fluid. Then spots of laser energy or cryo are added to create the necessary spot welds. If you think about it, the bubble in this illustration is defying gravity. It wants to float to the top of the eye. To keep the bubble in the right spot over the tear means keeping the head in a particular position, which may be a bit inconvenient. Also, the bubble has to last long enough for the retinal welds to take hold, typically several weeks. This simple procedure has a pretty high success rate, about 80 percent. Compared to the other options, it is simpler to perform, it can be done in the office and has less of certain complications. There is another approach that is now frequently used based on a surgical procedure called a vitrectomy, surgical removal of the vitreous. Let's see how we might address our basic problems from inside the eye with vitrectomy. Here we are in the middle of a vitrectomy surgery. I'm showing two instruments inside the eye. On the left is the vitrector 
an instrument that takes little bites of vitreous jelly and sucks them out of the eye. On the right is a fiber optic light that illuminates the inside of the eye so you can see what you're doing. Removing the vitreous directly removes the vitreous traction. Then, it also allows direct access to the subretinal fluid, which gives the option of draining internally. With traction relieved, the retina can be welded to the eye wall with either laser or cryo treatment. Finally, a gas bubble can be instilled to hold the retina in place and keep the tear closed, while the spot welds have a chance to form a strong enough adhesion. Like with the pneumo, the eye has to be positioned so the gas bubble is keeping the hole closed. In this case, vitrectomy allows for repair of the retinal detachment entirely from the inside of the eye without requiring placement of a scleral buckle. It has a high success rate, around 90%. A couple of notes. One, I have only covered general concepts. I have not covered all the surgical techniques, for example, use of silicon oil or specific complications of each procedure. That would require a lot more time. Two, this information is not to take the place of seeing your ophthalmologist. If you have any of the warning symptoms mentioned before, you should call your ophthalmologist promptly. To review, the process leading to a retinal detachment typically begins with a retinal tear, followed by a small detachment which progressively increases in size. A tear is relatively easy to treat using laser or cryo. Once the retina detaches, things become more complicated. There are three standard ways of repairing a retinal detachment. Each aims to get the retina back in position against the eye wall, relieve traction, and weld it so it will stay attached. Pneumatic or gas bubble is simplest to perform with few complications and a high success rate. Scleral buckle is a complicated three-step surgery with a high success rate but a few particular problems. Vitrectomy is a regular procedure for retinal surgeons. It is straightforward to perform and has a high success rate with few complications. It wasn't all that long ago that a retinal detachment meant lost vision for an eye. With current technology, surgical success rate is 80% or higher with one operation and around 95% with a second procedure. These are amazing steps forward in medical technology. There is a separate series of three videos that covers the vitreous and vitrectomy in detail. Here are selected references if you want to read further.